Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be doodling feathers. This was so quick, easy and fun to do but before we start, let me just sketch out the shapes first in case any of you need a better visualization before we start to paint. I'm sure everyone knows the very basic shape of a feather which is what I'm going to draw out here. I'm not going to do any fancy shapes, I'm just working with this one silhouette that I'm sketching right now with the shaft in the middle then the rest of the feather looking pretty much the same except for the top part where I played with the thinness or how round or sharp the top it is and I'm also going to treat the bottom the same way for all the feathers to keep it simple. These are basically the silhouettes that I want to keep in mind while I paint but for additional texture I like to open up and separate sections of the feather so it doesn't look so static. For this I still work around the silhouette and I just open up certain areas by drawing the full silhouette first it might be easier to visualize the opened or the section feathers once you get used to it. I would recommend for you to draw it out without the simplified silhouette and straight to the textured or the open feathers as practice before painting so it's a bit easier to paint freehand later without the guide. I try to angle my lines when I create the separation and also drawing them at different distances so it looks natural and as for the top section I try to keep it mostly together but at the same time I try to create an uneven jagged line to create the edge. Here I'm going to draw the feather without the guide and this is something that you might want to try to do a few times before painting as warm up. I don't really know much about feathers so I had to search the terms. I'm not sure if this is even correct but here are the terms that I'll be referring to when I'm painting them later so we're on the same page. So here are all the colors that I'll be using for this painting. Starting from the left, this is Rose Matter by Holbein, Indigo by Schmincke, Cobalt Green by Holbein, Turquoise Blue by White Knights, Sepia by Holbein, Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith, and Yellow Ochre by Roman Schmal. For the gold shimmers, I'm going to use my Fine Tech Gold and I'm going to use this champagne color. So let's start with the first feather. I'm using a mixture of turquoise blue with sepia and I'm just going to use my liner brush to create a thin line which is slightly curved and I'm using a thick consistency with a light load on my brush to make sure that I can create a really delicate line. I added more turquoise blue into the previous mixture and I'm using a medium to thick consistency with my large synthetic brush now. As you can see I rotated my brush facing outwards while moving it up and down very lightly to create the uneven edges for the tip of the feather and I'm just following this up by cleaning my brush and just using clean water to drag the color downwards. I kept the basic silhouette of the feather in mind while also creating the uneven openings on the side of the feather until I get close to the bottom of the line then I'm going to continue on with the downy barbs or the fluffy part of the feather and for that I used the same color but in a medium consistency without the added water this time and just letting the color flow into the still wet paint from the light consistency turquoise. The top should be dry by now and I'm going to layer on the same color in a thick consistency and add a slight design to this feather but you can also paint on different designs as well for this. You can leave the color here if you only want to use one color mixture but I like having subtle color changes so I'm going to add a thin consistency yellow ochre that I'm just going to layer on in certain areas. <laughs> 
I'm going to spread the color very lightly and also create curved lines to add subtle details to the feather. Here I'm adding thin lines using a thin consistency of the turquoise mix and I'm just using the tip of my brush but in any part of the painting if you feel that it's a bit difficult to control the paint to paint thin areas you can always switch to a smaller brush. I always find it easier to paint the feather facing upwards so I'm just flipping my sketchbook to paint the next one. For the second one, I'm using a thick consistency mixture of indigo with sepia to paint the shaft using my liner brush again. And as you can see, the tip of the shaft is not as high as the previous one that we just painted because the feather is flipped and I'm going to extend the top of the feather as I'm painting it on. So the height or the length becomes similar to the first one. I'm going to use the same technique to paint the feather by using the side of my brush and letting it face outwards. This time I'm using indigo and again as I move downwards I added more water so the color becomes lighter but this time as I reach the middle of the feather while the paint is still wet I'm going to continue on with the light consistency of buff titanium. As I get closer to the bottom of the feather, I try to make the texture a bit fluffier and as for the small fluffy area at the bottom, I'm going to use a mix of indigo with sepia in a thin to medium consistency. The texture of this area is very fine, so if you feel that it's a bit hard to control your water and your brush, you can switch to a smaller brush. I'm going to layer on the design using indigo by itself in a thick consistency and I'm painting a round shape at the tip of the feather. Then I'm going to leave a thin line and continue on with the indigo again in a lighter consistency which I'm going to extend downwards and paint thin curved lines to create the fluffy texture. Moving on to the third feather, I flipped my book again and this time I'm going to create a brown color by mixing yellow ochre and sepia. I am using my liner brush again to create a thin shaft and then I'm going to add rose matter to the previous mixture to paint the feather. For this one, I'm starting with a light to medium consistency because I want the base color for this to be fairly light. So since this is already quite light, I'm not going to add more water as I paint downwards. However, as I reach around the middle section of the feather, I'm going to switch to buff titanium. So there's a slight difference in color, but you can also use other colors as well if you would like to create different combinations. While the bottom portion is still wet, for the fluffy area, I'm going to use the first mixture of yellow ochre with sepia and I'm using the tip of my brush to create the fluffy texture. For the design of this feather, I want the surface to be damp so the paint can travel slightly. So here I'm using a clean damp brush to slightly dampen the surface. Then I'm going to continue with a thick consistency mix of sepia with rose matter to paint dots on the wet surface so it blooms slightly. To paint the dots, I like to keep them closer together at the top while playing with the sizes. Then as I move downwards, I made the dots a bit more spaced out, leaving the middle of the feather empty. Then I'm going to add tiny spaced out dots at the bottom near the fluffy area. Just like the other feathers, I want to add a different hue to build interest and for this one, I'm going to add a light consistency indigo in certain areas so the brown feather will also be cohesive with the rest of the blue feathers that I'm going to paint after this one. <laughs> 
If some of the dots that you initially painted is gone after the blue, you can always paint on more on top to replace them. Once I'm done, I'm going to flip my sketchbook again and we're going to move on to the fourth one. To paint the shaft, I used a mixture of turquoise blue with sepia just like what I used for the first feather. And as for the feather itself, I'm going to use cobalt green in quite a thin consistency, but I'm also going to alternate using a bit of yellow ochre from time to time just for a little bit of color variation. I'm just going to do this until I reach the bottom of the feather. For the downy barbs or the fluffy area of the feather, I'm going to use the same mixture as the shaft with added yellow ochre. So that's turquoise blue with a bit of sepia and yellow ochre in a medium consistency. Then with added yellow ochre in a thick consistency, I'm going to add dots near the bottom of the feather and letting the color bloom out on the damp surface. I felt like the base color was a bit too light at the top so I decided to go over it again using the same color of cobalt green followed up with a little bit of yellow ochre that I blend with the first layer and following this up while the surface is still a bit wet I use turquoise blue in a medium consistency I painted most of the top area and then I followed this up by adding dots so it blooms out on the wet surface that I just initially painted before I used quite a watery load so as you can see the top section stays wet for quite a long time. This is because I'm going to lift that area using a small rolled up tissue so I want the surface to stay wet in order for it to be able to lift. With clean tissue I just dot the darker areas and once my tissue won't absorb any more paint I just rolled up another section of that tissue and continue on until I have a good amount. Moving on to the last feather, I'm going to go back to the second color mixture by using a mixture of indigo with sepia, but this time I added more sepia so the indigo look a bit more muted and grayish. I started with a thick consistency for the shaft, then using the same color mixture, I'm going to paint the top section, starting again with a thick consistency and then adding water to lighten the color. So when I'm continuing downwards, I made sure to clean my brush and just pulled whatever color I had left from the, the consistency indigo at the top and I just pull it downwards and as I reach closer to the bottom I'm going to continue this on with a bit of yellow ochre and a thin consistency. As I get to the bottom area where the fluffy part of the feather is, I'm going to switch back to a thick consistency of indigo with sepia and I'm just going to paint that part while it's still wet to continue on from the yellow ochre and with whatever I had left on my brush, I'm just going to paint it upwards making textured lines following the fiber of the feather to make it look softer and fluffier. Lastly, this is an option, but I want to add a bit of shimmer to this painting. I'm going to use the champagne color from my Fine Tech Gold palette, and I'm going to paint dots in different sizes, starting from the fifth feather that I just painted. Just like the previous feathers with the dots, I wanted to concentrate more of the dots at the top of the feather and make it a bit more sparse as I get towards the bottom. However, when I was painting this, I didn't really like 
how flat it ended up looking for the top part of the feather so i ended up just smudging it with a bit of water and the paint from the gold ended up lifting some of the grayish color from underneath and from whatever was picked up from my brush i just kept on smudging it until i get a bit of a light shimmer which ended up looking nice and subtle with the lifted dots and i'm just going to do the same thing for the fourth feather as well Moving back to the third feather, I want to create dots again following the design of the feather and I'm placing them inside the dark dots at the top as well as adding small dots slightly scattered around the rest of the feather. I love the color of the second one so I'm not going to do too much for this one. I just used a medium consistency of the shimmer to paint a few lines following the design of the feather. Finally, we're back to the first and last one. Again, just like the second feather, I'm going to follow the base design and add shimmers on the thick lines that I painted earlier against the fiber of the feather and then softening the blend using a clean damp brush so the shimmer line doesn't stand out too much. For this area, I ended up glazing a light consistency of the same base mixture of turquoise with a touch of sepia just to darken it slightly so I can take the design lower and also build a bit more contrast at the same time. And this is the completed painting. It's super simple and quick to do for a fun doodling session. I love the subtle shimmers of this one, but you can also leave that out if you prefer it without the shimmers. Like usual, all the list of tools that I used for this painting, as well as my social media links, will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!